There is nothing worse than untapped potential. If you know that you're made for more, this is the place. I know that every successful person I've ever met has one thing in common. They do not let themselves fall victim to their circumstances. They figure out a way to rise above it. So join me on this journey where I help you to be better, do better, and have better in life and in business. If you're feeling stuck and you're needing some practical tools, some hope to get you to that better life, this is definitely the place for you. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Unstuck Podcast. I am your host, Lachelle Weemy, and today we have a chance to talk to embodiment coach and teacher, Sarah Jane. You guys, she has such a brilliant, beautiful soul, and I'm so excited to be able to learn from her and her experiences and her perspective on ways that all of us can really truly embody who we are and what our purpose is for the world and how we can share all of this amazing, just goodwill and love towards one another. So Sarah Jane, thank you so much for showing up today. I'm so excited to talk to you. Mm, thanks for having me. Yeah. So, hi, everyone. I would love Sarah for you to Jane. tell us a little more about who you are, Sarah Jane, and how you show up and help people today. Mm -hmm. I live on a small island off the west coast of Canada called Salt Spring Island. Uh, and this is the unceded territory of the Hulkaminim and the Senchotham speaking peoples. And I'm very proud to live on this land and very grateful for those who stewarded it before me. Um, how I show up and help people. I help fellow childless, not by choice women reconnect with themselves and their bodies through self-compassion mindful movement and community connection so that we can show up in our lives fully even though they may not look like we had wanted them to look or that we hoped that they would look but moving forwards with everything that we've learned through the infertility journey into a life of meaning and purpose and as someone who has, you know, experienced some of those pieces in my life, I can completely relate to the feeling of stuck and the helplessness and the hopelessness that that being childless not by choice can bring into our lives. And I'm going to guess <laughs> that your journey and how you show up today has been greatly impacted by what has also been part of your journey. So do you want to just take a moment, Sarah Jane, and, and help us to get to know you and, and your story and how you came to be so passionate about what you are today? Mm hmm. But it's uh, the infertility journey is sort of long and, and not linear. It's very winding. Uh, so I'll just give you the cold notes. It's sort of about uh, this happened over about eight years. And so there I, I experienced multiple pregnancy losses, uh, as well as a long period of unexplained infertility with lots of tests and all kinds of things to, to see if they could explain it, but right. came up with a diagnosis of unexplained infertility. And then four years ago, a chronic illness led me to having a hysterectomy, mm -hmm. which was the sort of line in the sand of, I'm not going to have children. And throughout that, the, that sort of long eight years, there it was this constant cycle of hope and despair, you know, sort of like, okay, well, maybe, and oh, no, that, that didn't happen. And, oh, well, maybe I'll try this, you know, this sort of like certain way of eating or taking these specific herbs or, you know, this, this mindset thing, you know, that uh, you know, all our, like mindset, food and nutrition obviously has an impact on our health and well-being, but it's not, it's not going to uh, give you a hundred percent success rate, you know, in terms of um, going from infertility to having a baby. You know, I know that lots of people have success with lots of different things. For me, that wasn't happening. So I was also kind of stuck in in that cycle of of hope until I had the hysterectomy and that for me was sort of like okay well there is it's not going to happen anymore so what am I going to do now and you know 
framing it like that makes it sound like a turning a page and like, okay, well, now on to something else, you know, when life doesn't really work like that. Um, it was uh, a long uh, struggle with grief, for sure. And the first step in that is sort of admitting that I was feeling grief and really looking at that and tending that grief and getting to know that grief in a certain way. And still to this day, you know, tending that grief as it comes up. It's definitely nowhere near as intense as it used to be. Um, but there are times, you know, where something will just sort of trigger sort of like what I call a griefy day. And um, being willing to face those things uh, with certain, you know, tools and in a container has been the way that I have mainly gone from what from what I would say was a stuck place to an unstuck place. There's so many things in your story that really resonated with me, and I completely can relate to specifically the the highs and lows, the the really really high hopes, because you have to have this hope when you're going through this journey to keep you going. <laughs> Right. Mm -hmm. But then it does, it falls from this, this high hope to this, you know, very deep state of despair. And it can be that, that just highs and lows of it. That seems to be the exhausting part mm -hmm. of just really getting your hopes up and then your hopes letting you down and going through that all over again. And mm -hmm. so I think our conversation is going to be a blessing in really two, two ways. I think that for the people who are out there experiencing this and they really just want to know how did you, how do you get through this? How do you, you, you know, have your griefy days and how do you get through that so that you can wake up tomorrow and have the most amazing day? Really just how do we cope with the situations that are really out of our control? And then I would mm -hmm. love for us to be able to offer some really great insight for the people that have not have not been, you know, had to have to go through this, but have people in their lives that they care about deeply and really want to know how they can best support the people who are going through this infertility journey. So let's start with just the people who are, are in this state presently and, and, and let's give them some hope and some practical solutions on how they can really continue to put one foot in front of the other. Mm hmm well, there's there's so many different uh, ways, you know, to to deal with with say grief and feelings and that sort of like roller coaster of hope and despair. So some ways that for me that uh, help me to feel really grounded in that sense that like I can keep going is being uh, in touch with my body with myself. I'm a longtime yoga teacher and practitioner. So that to me is also it's a very familiar place, like the on my mat. So moving my body, but sort of shifting the lens a little bit. So not moving in the sense of, okay, I'm going to exercise or I'm doing this because I want to be stronger. I want to be more flexible, but I'm moving in a way that it is the most kind way that I can move, moving in a way uh, that uh, where I'm practicing self-compassion. Because when we're in that, as you know, in that journey of the highs and the lows, um, we really need support. So this is sort of like the second part of your question, but I won't fully address that <laughs> now. Um, we're often looking for support from outside, but it's really crucial that we give ourselves that support because we are really the only ones who know what we need and how we need it. And if we can cultivate that um, compassion for ourselves, we're also more able to tell others, this is what I need. This makes me feel better. Um, and also sort of cultivating this sense of self-compassion in that acknowledging that it's it's nobody's fault you know the sort of being on an infertility journey or um, you know coming to being childless not by choice it's not something that you 
you know, did do or did wrong, or you should have done this, you should have done that, I should have drank more green smoothies, I should, you know, like all that kind of stuff. Um, really recognizing that and seeing that and facing that with self compassion is a really key component of being able to keep going. And I think like, you know, I remember feeling this way and I've had friends that are very close in this journey that have also felt this way that you get a point where sometimes you just wonder like what's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what you're saying is that, you know, there's nothing wrong with us and that we have to be able to look at ourselves with the compassion and to be able to remind ourselves. So what kind of ways do you have for people to start doing that in a better way to not be able to to make ourselves feel like there's something defective with us or wrong with us but in sense can turn in and really truly love ourselves every part of ourselves even the things that we don't necessarily want to see at this time Mm -hmm. well I think it starts with an awareness of your inner dialogue you know most of us have this sort of narrative this sort of unconscious script running uh most of the time that is unchallenged Mm -hmm. um and they're the kinds of things that we would never say to a friend who came to us having the same problems or the same experiences that we are we would never say these things to other people that we say to ourselves so I think awareness of the inner narrative and the way that you speak to yourself is a really powerful first uh, step and so once you notice what you're saying to yourself you could think what would I say to a friend in a similar situation and then try and offer that to yourself so this can be done in sort of like a formal way you know like sitting down to do sort of like a self-compassion meditation or it can happen when you're moving about in the world you know you're in the grocery store and you notice a thought comes in and and uh you know you can have that inner dialogue with your with yourself even in public you know right. so you can can re reframe and reaffirm this lens of self compassion internally and i think that you know one thing i want to just point out when you guys are starting to become more aware of the internal dialogue that you have going in between your ears i think that it's really easy for ourselves to judge those thoughts like god oh, darn it lachelle you're doing it again right mm-hmm. and i think that it's really just a good thing to remind ourselves um that we are the thinker of our thoughts but we are not our thoughts and that if you can think about you know the dialogue that goes on in your brain i this is an example right like oh you should really make your bed but i don't want to make my bed but you really should because it's going to give you self discipline but i don't really feel like it right so you have this like dialogue going on inside of our heads but who is the one who's noticing the dialogue that is our true self right and so just mm-hmm. remembering that we are not our thoughts we are the thinker of our thoughts and when we're the thinker of our thoughts instead of condemning us for for what we're thinking because we're human the thinker of our thoughts can look at it and say huh isn't that interesting isn't that interesting that this is coming up again and looking at it from a curiosity standpoint and, and a compassionate standpoint and that's a instead of a critical parent you know like why are you doing this again kind of thing and it's really interesting because when we start to pay attention to even just the way that we are uh, judging our own thoughts when we start noticing them can really give us that another layer of compassion. And I I just love the fact that, you know, like you said, being aware of what we're thinking and and doing so as a self-compassion practice can be a game changer for so many of us. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And I really like what, what you just said there with the um, example of the two sides, yeah. right? And the idea isn't to cover over Mm -hmm. Um, thoughts that we're having maybe unkind thoughts that we're having with like just trying to squash them down with kind thoughts it is really that like okay interesting I'm thinking this and so I'm going to meet the part of myself that is thinking that with compassion yes like a best friend would just like you were saying Mm -hmm. and I think one of the things too that I I believe many of us can get stuck is in being critical around those thoughts or the feelings that we have. And then instead of addressing them with compassion and curiosity, we convince ourselves that we're not allowed to feel that way. We're not allowed to think those thoughts. And therefore we try to shove them. Instead, we think that we're just pushing them out, but really we're pushing them in (laughs) 
And as somebody that is an, a, you know, embodiment teacher and coach, like you understand that our, our thoughts are energy and that energy can become trapped inside of our body, which then therefore creates an exaggerated response when we are triggered, when something that used to make a little response in my brain or my body now becomes a really big response. A lot of that is because we're not only facing what just happened, but we're also facing all of the other things that are energetically attached to that inside of our bodies. So our, our reaction may seem exaggerated, but we're reacting to all of it at the same time, right? Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's no sort of turning towards it, as you say, it's sort of like shoving it down. And it often it will come out. And it often comes out, I like to say it comes out sideways, you know, <laughs> in situations and in times where it's, yeah, it does seem maybe a bit much for, for the actual situation at hand. And yeah, turning towards um, uncomfortable feelings and, you know, quote unquote, negative feelings right. um, is a way to actually sort of in deal with them and then integrate them. Yes, because, you know, I love how you use air quotes when you said negative, because our thoughts aren't negative or positive. Mm -hmm. They're always going to be clues. Mm -hmm. And so when we are feeling a feeling that we don't want to feel, it's a clue of something else that is going on and something that we get to explore, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, um, you can't really have a practice of shoving down some feelings. Like if you're, your practice is shoving, kind of shoving down all feelings. Right. And so if, um, if you don't create the space to turn towards or allow quote unquote negative feelings, then it also, we also dampen our capacity mm -hmm. to feel what we want to feel or what we might term as positive feelings. Yes. Oh my gosh. I've never thought about it like that, but you know, that's probably partly why if I'm giving some constructive criticism, I'm going to take it really hard. But if somebody gave me a compliment, I don't always accept that and receive that. And so mm -hmm. what you're saying is that you you can't necessarily just accept all or reject all. And, and that's just a really, really very insightful way to look at it. That if you want to be able to handle all emotions and all things in a beautiful, healthy way. So what are some of the ways that you, Sarah Jane, process your emotions as they come into your body and your awareness? Mm -hmm. Well, it depends on the day. I sort of have this, what I like to refer to as like a toolbox, uh -huh. you know, that I can sort of pick and choose the different things that yeah. might uh, appeal to me on that day. So movement is one of them. We already talked about that. Being out in nature with my dog, I have a dog, so we have to go out every day. And, uh, you know, some days I might be like, oh, it's raining, I have to go, you know, but by the time I'm out there, I realize, oh, okay, I needed this space, I needed this time just to be quiet and to, and to listen and, and really feel what's sort of going on. And uh, sometimes I listen to podcasts when I walk. But when I feel that it's been like a quite a like a heavy days or yeah. sort of there's been a big situations, I just like to not listen to anything. I don't want to have input. I want the time to just sort of like integrate and just let thoughts come and go. So that is a that's a big one for me. Writing, uh, free writing, you know, just sort of like putting the pen to the page and seeing what comes out is a great way that I found to, to when I read back, I'm like, oh, I didn't even realize that I was still thinking about that or had anything more to sort of say about that, you know. Um, I'd say those are my those are my top three, but then also uh, finding like-minded people, so finding communities of people who really can understand uh the situations and the experiences that that you've had so in my case um connecting with other women who are childless not by choice so that you have a community and support around you of other people who understand what you're going mm -hmm. through and absolutely i i appreciated that on my journey as 
as I went through things and the grief and the hopelessness. And one of the things that I found happened to me and the people that were in my support group were the triggers that would come when people were having a baby, like when I would come across pregnant people, or especially like when I was told by our doctor that there's a chance we never would have children, my sister and my sister-in-law both became pregnant, like right around that same time. And as happy I was for them, it was really hard for me. Mm -hmm. So, so what do you tell people who are going through this and they, they're finding that is a common thing that they're having to go through as well? Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a really hard one. That's sort of, I'd say sort of like the, the number one. Yeah. And I think it's giving yourself time and space and being honest with, with uh, other people, if it feels safe to do so. So that, that part of it, that if it feels safe to do so being the most important part, you know, um, you don't owe anybody an explanation of, why you might not want to say like attend a baby shower or or different events like that or pregnancy announcements or gender reveals you know those if that if it's going to make you feel worse to go than it is not to go then you get to decide right and if it feels better to meet with that person individually later to to you know say congratulations or or whatever it is um that you can make those choices for yourself i i for myself i know that i have forced myself to go to many baby showers or you know babies birthday parties where i just really didn't want to be there uh, but felt uncomfortable saying like hey i don't want to go because there's this sense that like oh well why can't you be happy for somebody else and that but it's more it's more complex than that as you know you know you can still show support and kindness for your for your friends without necessarily putting yourself in situations that are going to be detrimental right and I think that sometimes you know it's the inner knowing of knowing that, okay, this might be a situation that I'm not feeling right now, but I'm going to be glad I went. Mm -hmm. Or just really knowing that there's nothing wrong with you if you choose to be compassionate for yourself right now. Mm -hmm. And that maybe that's the wise thing to do. Mm -hmm. Because you know that if you end up going, perhaps it's going to cause some unnecessary resentment on your part as you heal that Mm -hmm. could have been avoided by being wise and listening to yourself and deciding not to go. Mm-hmm. And so it's really, there's no right or wrong. It's mm-hmm. really just knowing yourself and figuring out what is the wisest, most compassionate way for you to handle this unique situation. Is mm-hmm. that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. There's no one size fits all, you know, uh, and it is sort of like a day by day and situation by situation kind of thing. But the most important part is that sort of inner knowing and that self-respect and self-compassion. Yeah, which is what you talked about at the beginning of our conversation is really just getting to know yourself, your body, your 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 needs and respecting mm-hmm. yourself, your body and your mm-hmm. needs in each moment as it comes. And mm-hmm. I think that it that can be one of the gifts that we can give. I truly believe that when we go through hard things that we get to choose, you know, how we can take little tiny gifts out of it as, as we go. And perhaps one of your gifts out of this terrible situation is that you have been able to not only get to know yourself and your body and, and have that compassion for yourself, but wow, what a beautiful gift you are to the other people who are listening to this and who are in your support group that get to be encouraged by you. And so I think that that's one of the things that has helped me on my journey of going through hard things is looking for the tiny little gifts that I can find Mm -hmm. that allow me to, to maintain some sense of, of purpose and positivity, even when it feels heavy and and that I, that Mm -hmm. I feel like I can't keep going on in this way. So, Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. what would you go ahead? Do you have anything else to add to that? No, no. Okay. Okay. So when I switch gears and I think about the, the people who are listening, and I know that there are so many people that 
that went, walked alongside of me and didn't know what to say, or, you know, me being in a space where right now, I mean, some of my closest friends are going through this and I wish that I could make it all better for them. And I just can't. And so what do you say to the people who are listening, who have never experienced what it is that, that you have gone through, but you can give them some just behind the scenes insight into what their loved one might be experiencing and how they can best support that person um, on this journey? Mm -hmm. Well, everybody um, is different. And so uh, different people, support to different people looks different ways. Mm -hmm. So I would say the best thing to do is to ask. You know, it might be really uncomfortable to to bring it up. So doing so in a really respectful, unintrusive, kind way, you know, it's like I I know you have been struggling, you know, with, with infertility, with pregnancy loss, whatever it is. And I, you know, I I don't know what that like personally but I want you to know that um, I'm here for you and I'm open to hearing how I can help you and support you and it's just as simple as that and that seems so profound like why not just ask like you know I don't know how you're feeling and I don't know what it's like to be in your shoes but I know I want you to know that I care mm -hmm. and that I am here for you in any way that I can and mm -hmm. I think that it's also, you know, just, I want to put this little plug in for the people who are going through this hard season, because I feel like some of my um, struggles have honestly been an inability to receive mm -hmm. the love and support from the people who do care about me. And mm -hmm. I had a underlying, which I've learned to let go and, and, um, and bless and let go, but is this unworthiness and really just working on the season to learn how to receive, mm -hmm. receive love, receive prayer, receive support, receive just genuine well wishes because people do care. And I think that sometimes we can really find ourselves in an unworthiness state of mind that is, is not accepting of all the gifts that people are trying to give us and so that's what I want to just encourage everybody out there who mm -hmm. who struggles with the re the lessons of receiving that you are worthy you are enough and that the people that love you want you to receive whatever it is that they're giving you as far as that love and support that they're trying to to bless you with mm -hmm. absolutely beautiful so, Sarah Jane, what else have we not touched on that we really, I would love to to make sure that we shed some light on? Well, we kind of touched a little bit on community. Yeah. But I think it's really an, an important piece. Um, when I was going through my infertility struggles, I really felt alone and isolated. Mm -hmm. um, I hadn't sort of tapped into uh, different support networks that are, are, are and were available. Um, and I don't know why I, I, I didn't tap into those. Uh, but I really have uh, tapped into the, the, the support that's there for childless, not by choice women. And it is a, it's a game changer to hear the, the thoughts and the feelings that you think are only your own being said by person after person after person <laughs> really gives this sense of belonging and that we're we're not we're not so isolated we're not so unique in our experience right. which um at first might sound like oh well no my experience is my own i'm not saying this trying to say that all experiences are the same right but when you hear uh, other people who have unique yet similar situations and their thoughts and feelings about it, it it uh, it takes some of the tension away because it it brings in that sense of belonging and that oh I'm not alone in this I'm not um, you know out there for for thinking that this thing or um, there are people who understand so finding 
whatever community that uh, of people who have had uh, similar yet unique experiences, finding that community, I think, is a really important part of, of healing. Can you give the audience a direction on where they can find some of the support? I'm sure that you offer a lot of assistance as well. So how would somebody find some things that are out there available to them? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, free groups on Facebook. If you search childless, not by choice, you'll, or, or childless, you'll come up with a ton of them. There are, there's a uh, one, I think it's one, I know of one paid community. It's called Lighthouse Women. For many years, it was called Gateway Women, but that's been changed. That's a paid online community with people all over the world. There's different um, meetups, different subgroups. It's just so vast. If you have never uh, sort of been exposed to that world and you are childless, not by choice, and you sort of go there, it will blow your mind about how how many amazing, wonderful people there are out there who who share this experience. Um, yeah, so those are my top top two. Okay, well, wonderful. Well, thank you for that. And I will make sure that you guys have access to Sarah Jane in the show notes that if you want to reach out to her, if her story resonates with you and you would love her perspective, um, we'll make sure that you have access to that and and can get a hold of her or follow her journey in any way that you want to. And I am so grateful that you're here. If you guys haven't already, hit subscribe, send a review, send a message. Let us know how much Sarah Jane and her story resonated with you and what you were able to get from it. We also absolutely love it when you guys share these episodes out to the people who need to hear them, as well as sharing them in your stories and tagging us because it's always fun to interact with you guys and let you know that we're watching and we want to share you out in our community as well. And Sarah Jane, one of the things that I always do when I am wrapping up a conversation is ask the guests to think of a question that you would like our audience to ponder that's going to move them from where they are to where they want to be. What would you like everyone to think about? Hmm. I guess what is the what is the kindest way you can be to yourself today? Oh my goodness. I love that. And every single person who's listening is going to benefit from that question. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, Sarah Jane. Thank you so much for showing up with your beautiful heart today and your story. And I am so glad that I get to spend another week with you guys. I'll see y'all next week. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Untuck Podcast. I'm so grateful to be on this journey with you. And don't forget to check out the show notes if you want to get into my private club, The Better Club, to be able to learn better ways to be better, do better, and have better. So until next time, keep showing up. Let's get unstuck together. Have a great day.